kick the session off. Um, my name is Matt Bass. Um, we will um, start by um, having John, um, who's our board president, say a few words. Um, so over to you, John. Oh yeah, thank you, Matt. Um, as Matt mentioned, my name is John Shadaki. I am the uh, serving uh, board president for the Data Site Board of Directors. Um, I'm based in Oakland, California, and I work at the California Digital Library. For those that aren't aware, um, the, the Board of Directors for Data Site is, is elected by the membership. And so we really appreciate everybody joining us today um, on sessions earlier and the, the following sessions that kind of this being the day that we bring all the membership together to discuss strategic initiatives and, and how the organization is running and what the future holds. Um, there's a lot of opportunities, um, as Matt will mention later on, uh, for members to get involved in data site. So uh, with the board and with the, the working groups and different uh, initiatives that help uh, data site sustain itself and to uh, grow its reach. So I'd like to thank Matt um, and the whole data site team for putting this uh, program together. Um, on behalf of everybody on the board, we really appreciate the work that goes into to keeping our infrastructure going. So thank you to the staff and to Matt for that. Um, also, one thing that'd be nice to do while we're starting this welcome session is for everybody on the call to, to share who they are and where they're, they're calling in from. Um, Datasite truly is a global community. Um, we have members from every portion of the world and different types of organizations utilizing the data site infrastructure. So if you could just put in the chat um, who you are, what institution you work for, and, and maybe um, uh, you know, what your connection is to data site. Is it as a direct member or through a consortium? Are you on the board? Are you, are you on one of the working groups? Are there other ways that you're involved? And just introducing yourselves uh, to each other and to the presenters really helps us get to know each other, especially since we're having to do this virtually this year. Um, so if you could go ahead and do that, and um, we'll let Matt walk us through uh, this welcome session. So thank you. Great. Thanks, John. And um, it's great that um, we are able to connect virtually. I think we all know why we can't do this in person um, this year, and that needs no explanation. Um, but it, it is in any case good to come together. And um, really where I wanted to kick the session off is what brings us together. Um, and so. Uh, starting off our, our vision, as many of you will know, is that we want to connect research, we want to identify knowledge. And so um, at Datasite, um, as a community, we want to bring together the disparate pieces of the um, research entities within the research lifecycle together, connecting those and understanding the reach of research across the institutions that participate in the community. We are a community-led organization. Uh, we have been uh, in operation since 2009, so over 10 years, and has always been open to participation from members around the world. And this includes uh, primarily, uh, we will classify as research organizations, but this also includes organizations that are funding research, that are uh, providing research facilities, etc. And these members are from across 48 countries globally and um, with a common purpose and a common mission. It's our collective effort as a community, and that will be something that I talk a bit about today is as a community, how we together protect our investment in this open infrastructure and work together. Our strength as a community, as an organization, is in our active membership. And so without our members, without the participation across the globe, um, we would not succeed as a community initiative. And so that's really important to acknowledge. And, and first and foremost, um, John thanked the staff and this is our day job and we love what we do. Um, but we also wanna thank you for what you do for the community and, and the support that you give us and the commitment to our mission. And so um, thank you to you. During the session today, um, we'll um, talk a bit about the uh, various activities at data sites and I'll share a bit of insight into our strategy following the strategic visioning process that we ran earlier this year. Uh, there are a number of sessions that have happened through the day, so this may not be your first session that you're joining, so um, a little bit strange that it's a welcome session and it may be your, your second or third session for the day, but we wanted to run this session a couple times repeated through the day. Um, 
that um, uh, we, we can share this, this important information with, with as many members in different regions as, as possible. There's also other presentations um, following, following this session. And so Mary, perhaps if you could post the um, link in the chat, um, just so if anyone hasn't registered for any of the other sessions, you're welcome to register for the final sessions today. Um, feel free to um, uh, join into those. I mentioned our community and so uh, to share a bit about where our community is or who our community is today and um, just last week I had a look and we were um, over 2300 repositories around the world with 250 members remember that consortium leads are only considered one member uh, in our member uh, community and so these Consortium leads also represent sometimes hundreds of organizations within their community. Um, this is spread across 48 countries. Together, the community has registered to date over 28 million DOIs uh, within our metadata store. And this comes from over 980 organizations that make use of our services. As any good community-led organization, um, we need strong governance. And so this is really important that we encourage and are really open to involvement from um, people and um, communities around the world um, that want to share our vision and, and participate in this and help guide, support, and grow our ongoing um, efforts in um, connecting research, identifying knowledge. I had a look and I didn't overanalyze it, uh, but we have 78 volunteer positions across the different steering groups and working groups uh, that really commit volunteer time and effort to data sites um, to help move us forwards. Uh, these groups are led or, or provided a scope uh, within a terms of reference um, that's set out by the board. Um, we have annual reports that provide progress on, on where, where we are, where we're going, and we also will soon be uh, putting up the board meeting summaries on our website um, and making these available so, so that you as a community ha have a sense of the different moving pieces and different things that are happening at DataSite. This is again an, an image that I've created that gives an idea of the governance structures. Um, I wouldn't read too much into this because they are various dotted lines that exist around the different structures and different groups. Um, but this at least gives an overview of how the different pieces work together. And so DataSite has the General Assembly. This is the members of the association, which is the overarching governance layer, the, the overarching decision-making body of DataSite. Uh, the General Assembly approves things like the fee models every year, um, various important policies, the statutes, but also importantly elects the executive board that then is charged per the statutes with providing ongoing oversight of the organization. And this goes through this annual election cycle. Uh, on the left hand side, we then have the staff. Um, so I lead the staff, um, I report into the executive board and the staff, we then work with the various steering groups um, and working groups. We also work with um, other groups that may be ad hoc advisory groups or standing working groups such as the RE3 data working group in our day to day work and efforts um, within data site. Uh, data site um, set out earlier this year um, to look to um, establish clear terms of reference with the respective groups and so the data site executive board um, established these terms of reference um, working with these groups um, that provide a clear scope and um, uh, 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 framing for, for the membership of these groups. Currently, the metadata working group has an open call for members. So I've uh, created a bit.ly link, uh, bit.ly uh, forward slash metadata WG 2021. Um, perhaps, Mary, if you wouldn't mind also just pinging that into the chat. Um, so if anyone is interested or, or knows somebody that would be interested in participating in the metadata working group, um, to please submit an application 
that would be fantastic. Um, the metadata working group uh, co-chairs will be reviewing the applications during October and looking to appoint a few members. We might stagger a few appointments over the coming months to make sure that we ensure effective rotation of working group members for continuation of our various efforts. We also have this uh, services, services and technology steering group and the community engagement steering group that are reviewing their membership in relation to the terms of reference and will likely make calls for members in the coming months. So please watch out for that. A brief mention about sustainability. And so during 2019 and 2020, we worked together as a community as a whole to discuss um, and develop the membership and service fee model. This was a extensive open consultation process that we ran with the community. Uh, to think about our long-term sustainability and how do we protect our investment as a community in that all of our members globally are investing time, effort, systems, integrations into um, this global infrastructure and how do we protect that? And so during April 2020, the model that was established by the ad hoc membership model advisory group was approved um, by 97.3% majority vote. And the reason I mentioned this today is that as a result, we've reached a really important strategic milestone in 2021. And that is that we are no longer reliant on project funding to ensure our sustainability and that we are sustainable as a community um, of members. And that's really important to us and to, to our members globally. We do look to have a bit of a balance and we make an intentional decision to be involved in strategically relevant and important uh, grant or project funding um, efforts that really align with our members' needs and efforts. And so we do look to support 15 to 20% of our uh, expenses through this, in, but ensuring that these are things that are specifically uh, aligned with the needs of our members. We also make very intentional decisions about expenditure and um, want to scale efficiently. We want to be right-sized. We don't want to grow an extensive organization. We want to make sure that we are supporting the scaling infrastructure and we are supporting the member service needs and really operating on a cost recovery basis. Moving into a bit about our services. So our services um, can now be uh, grouped into three distinct categories, creation, discovery, and integration. And I'll go through each of those in a moment. In developing our services, the team works on a uh, community-led effort in defining our priorities and validating new ideas. This comes through the data site roadmap. Um, so Mary, apologies, I keep um, asking you to post, post things, um, but if you wouldn't mind um, posting a link to the roadmap. This is where we collect ideas, um, gather further feedback. So you'll see ideas that are under consideration where the product engineering team's looking to validate some more ideas, verify certain feature enhancements, et cetera. And you'll also see as things progress through the roadmap and, and you could track those and watch them as, as they progress. And um, this is also where we gather feedback for the metadata working group. And so if there's ideas for metadata schema changes, please, submit these through to the roadmap. They will again go through a validation cycle and feed through into the metadata working group. It's very helpful to the metadata working group to have uh, the use cases and, and a bit more context when they consider enhancements to the metadata schema. And then we look to align these uh, schema changes with various service enhancements that are needed to support this, the adjustments in the schema. Moving into the different categories of services. So I mentioned creation. So uh, data site Fabrica is a primary interface that is used to create DOIs. This can also happen via APIs, which I'll talk about in a moment. Um, and this is really where you create and manage your DOIs. We then have discovery. And so we have data site commons. You'll see over the coming months and year, uh, that there's a lot more convergence around data site commons, so a lot more effort being put into um, bringing functionality and services into data site commons as, as a central discovery interface. We will be retiring data site search, and a lot of that functionality will come across into data site commons. 
um, and bringing that all together in, in a really um, good, robust interface. We also have the PID graph, which is uh, available via the GraphQL API, which allows machines to also discover and connect research across different, different persistent identifiers. And then finally, uh, under our service category of integration, this is our various APIs. And so we, we maintain a number of APIs. We recommend the REST API because of the functionality and what you can do with it. Many of our members do use the MDS API. I will also mention now that the Easy API will be retired at the end of the year. Uh, if you are using this, you should have been contacted by our team already, and we're working with you to trans transition to one of the other APIs. Um, but if you haven't been contacted, please do reach out to us um, and, and let us know. But that, that shouldn't be the case um, because we, we have worked through, through the list of, of users and members using the Easy API. So with that, I will move into looking ahead a bit about our strategy update and, and where we're going. So we um, are a community driven organization spread across 48 countries and um, we have diverse perspectives across the staff and across our community. So one of the things that is really important to us is values. And these were values that were identified by our team um, that really ensure the ways in which we undertake our different activities and initiatives are aligned with the needs and expectations of the member community. Uh, these values help us tell the community and you as our members the ways in which we achieve the mission of the organization in our daily activities, but also what our team values in performing their work. During 2020, we worked with an external facilitator to review the team values um, as well as consideration under the strategic visioning process this year um, to give some thought into a refined list of va values. And so here is the um, um, refined uh, values that we have. There's four, four core values and I'll go through them briefly. Transparency, so we, we wanna be transparent in everything we do. We wanna be open. We wanna make sure that we engage with the community um, and work, work um, in, in that manner. We wanna build trust um, as, as the second value. So we seek to be a trusted partner for our members and other community stakeholders by delivering services that uphold community principles. We want to make sure that we're reliable, that we develop and support reliable business and identify services. And then finally, we want to make sure that we're inclusive, that we are supporting a global community, that we value these diverse perspectives and really work together as, as a community. The strategic um, planning process earlier this year began with a period of strategic visioning. Uh, we brought in consultants to um, run the initial consultative process. And through this process, we were able to gather a lot of information from our members, from our community to understand current perspectives of data site, how we thrive in the future, what roadblocks might get in the way in, in moving forward in achieving our vision. And we've now moved into this uh, enablement phase where um, we're taking the traditional strategy house that was developed from the consultants that provides a blueprint for our strategic plan and are now working through the various governance structures at data site to validate and refine the strategy house. I wanted to share the three key pillars within the strategy house and the strategic initiatives under each of these pillars. I should note though that this is not final. This is really sharing as we are midway through the process that we're working through this with the different governance structures, but we definitely did wanna share this with the community as you provided input into the strategic visioning process in, in various forms earlier this year. And this is where we are. And we will present the final plan uh, back to the community during Q4 of this year. So the first pillar is to provide easy, efficient, and responsive community services. Within this, we have two strategic initiatives, the first being adapting our uh, operational objectives and processes to align with community needs as they evolve, recognizing importantly that community needs will evolve and we do need to continue to adapt and align. The second is establishing priority indicators that measure how we align with the community needs 
and communicate openly with the community to ensure that we remain accountable. And so within this initiative, we'll be working with the community to identify what are the indicators that we want to track that make sure that we are aligned and supporting the needs and, and evolving over time. Moving into the second pillar, uh, this is to connect scholarly resources through metadata and to bring rigor uh, to the scholarly record and track the reach. And within this, the three strategic initiatives are accelerating metadata completeness and extending metadata through additional sources. And so here we're looking at event data and relational metadata across different sources and how do we enhance the, the connections that we have in this, this graph and this vision of connecting research identifying knowledge. The second strategic initiative is consolidating and refining the analytical use cases that our members have and then developing and launching services that address these use cases for analysis. And finally, um, the third strategic initiative is to accelerate the discoverability and reuse of members' metadata through enhanced harvesting services. Through a series of focus groups at the end of 2020, we worked with various aggregators that make use of our members' metadata that um, understanding their needs and we identified that there's some enhancements that we can provide, which then supports our members in their discoverability and reuse of, of your metadata um, within, within the various aggregators and har um, harvesting services out there. And then the final pillar, the third pillar is innovate boldly in the pit landscape. And um, this does need some refinement and clarity around what we mean about um, innovating boldly in the pit landscape. Um, but we, um, want to look as, as the first strategic um, initiative within this pillar is to communicate this very clearly and, and so articulate what does this mean, what is our role in the PID services landscape, what uh, principles do we uphold and, and how we go about our work. The second strategic initiative is to take very intentional proactive steps to become a trusted community persistent identifier service partner for research organizations. And this involves building services and strategies that support the various use cases, including a range of resource types. You've seen over the years that we have um, implemented various different types of resources within our metadata schema. So research data, preprints, white papers, software, patents, DMPs, um, how do we bring those into our schema? How do we support those use cases and, and work with our members as, as a common, a single trusted partner um, within, within this um, workflow? And then finally, recognizing that um, obviously we want to understand what are the resourcing um, implications? What, how do we fund and sustain the organization? Um, how do we accelerate this bold innovation with, with the means that we have and where do we place priorities? And so um, working on that um, with the various governance groups will be important. And then the final slide that I have for this session is to talk about the execution and next steps on our strategic visioning um, process. Um, and this will be the next iteration of the strategic plan and that will come out for form the basis for our uh, annual uh, operational vision and strategy that the staff implement. And that's really the, the execution of the uh, overarching multi-year strategic plan. During Q4, we'll be sharing this with the community and um, starting to work with you. And, and early in 2022, we'll launch the, the vision for next year. And so that's all I had for this session. Um, we do have one or two more minutes. If there's any comments, questions, please feel free. We are always here. We love hearing from you. Um, any, any feedback or any input is, is always welcome. There's various board members that are also here and also available. Um, if, if you want to reach out to board members, feel free to email us, um, reach out to them directly. Um, um, we're happy to, to connect the community. It's really um, back to what I started out as is our strength is in our active membership and collaboration. Just having a look, is there anything in the Q&A? Nothing there and nothing in the chat thus far.
Okay, I think, um, all right, thanks, Sheila. And <laughs> um, yeah, with that, um, I think we'll um, probably start closing down the session so uh, the next session can start up. Um, thank you again. It's um, really great um, to get together. Hopefully, in years to come, we can also do some in person things, but um, great to be able to do this virtually. And thank you very for, much. Um, yeah. for joining us. We made John Stab late last night, and so he was up yesterday his time late in the night, and, and at least now's a bit more reasonable time. Thanks. Oh, great to join you. Yeah, thank you very much. Have a good day. Uh, bye.